Welcome back. In our last tutorial, we showed you how to implement the code on your robot cortex. In this tutorial, we'll be showing you exactly how to map these functions that you're writing to the actual VexNet joystick that you'll be using. The first thing you're going to do is create a new file at the top of the page. It's good practice in a robot C program to make sure that the code that's being executed is in a while loop. This makes sure that when the code has finished executing that it doesn't just stop working and then your robot has no new instructions. What you're going to do to create this while loop is type while, left parenthesis, true, right parenthesis, space, and you're going to start your left curly bracket. And then you're going to go down a few lines and start your right curly bracket so that you have space to edit. What we have here is it says while the thing inside this bracket is true, then do this. So true you'll also see sometimes done as one equals equals one. The information inside your while loops will continue to run until you terminate the Vex joystick, either by turning it off or by sending a debug turn off command. This is your VexNet joystick. This has all the buttons that you're going to use to control your robot. We'll be teaching you how to map these buttons in your code next. The VexNet joysticks are mapped in channels. On the right side of the controller, moving left to right will affect the values in channel 1 whereas moving up and down will affect the values in channel 2. On the left joystick, moving left to right will affect the values in channel 4, whereas moving up and down will affect only the values in channel 3. The next thing that we're going to do is type something into this while loop, but we have nothing to input just yet, so we're going to go to Motor and Sensor Setup. Now we're going to define our motors, just like we did in our last tutorial, so that we can reference them in the code and give them something to do. Now what we're going to try and do is make the value of the right motor, as in its speed, increase when we push the right joystick up. Now, if you remember in tutorial 2, we had motor as our command, then we referenced our right motor, then we put in a right bracket, space, set it equal to. Now, this time we're going to do something different. Instead of setting it to a definite value, what we're going to do is tell it to use the value of the right joystick in the y-axis. So we're going to say vex rt as referring to our controller, and now we're going to say channel 2, abbreviated ch2. And we're going to close this with a right square bracket and a semicolon. Now what we're going to do is to do the same thing for the left motor, but this time we're going to map it to channel 3, which if you remember was the y-axis of the left joystick. So we're going to do motor, left bracket, left motor, right bracket, space equals, then we're going to go vex rt, referencing our controller again, but this time mapping it to channel 3. So you're going to go channel 3, right semicolon. The way we have our program set up, our right motor is now bound to our right joystick on its channel 2, which is the y-axis channel. What this means is that when we press the right channel joystick up, it's going to go forward, meaning that right motor is now a positive speed. What means when we push it down is that right motor is going in a negative speed, meaning it's going backwards. The same corresponds to the left motor on the left joystick where the y-axis is channel 3. This system is known as tank drive, and it's the simplest way of setting up driving on your robot while also maintaining speed. If you're finding once that you upload this code to your robot that one of your motors is going in the opposite direction that you want it to, 
return to motor and sensor setup at the top of your screen, and then for the corresponding motor, select reversed from the checkbox. Then make sure to click OK or apply. The other system of driving is arcade mode driving, in which both of your motors will correspond to only one of the joysticks. In a situation where you're using more than two motors, you'll have this set up so that all of your motors will be able to be controlled from a single joystick. Arcade mode is done like this. Motor, left bracket, left motor, right bracket, space equals space. Now you're going to start a quantity using parentheses. So left parenthesis, vex RT, left square bracket, channel two, right square bracket. Now, as we did with equals, we're also gonna do with plus. So we're gonna have spaces on either side. So space plus space, vex RT, left bracket, channel one, right bracket. And now we're gonna do a right parenthesis to close that quantity that we started earlier. Then, what we're gonna do with this entire quantity is we're gonna divide that by two. We're gonna divide this combined speed of channel one and channel two in half. And then we're gonna close that line with a right semicolon. Note that in robot C, division is done by a forward slash. So we had channel one, right bracket, right parenthesis, forward slash, two. And then we closed our line with a semicolon. Now we're gonna do similar to the same thing, but in terms of simplification, we're gonna go ahead and copy and paste what we just did. So we're gonna copy that line, paste it in the line below. We're gonna change left motor to right motor, and then we're gonna change one other small detail. Our plus sign is now gonna become minus. We're gonna subtract the speed of channel one from the speed of channel two. Make sure to divide that line by two as well. That's how you do the simple version of arcade drive. Note that this system can only get to half of the total max speed available for your robot. We'll talk later about how to maximize the efficiency of your arcade drive system. Also remember that in this case, only the right joystick is controlling the motors in the system. Thank you for joining us and be sure to be back for our next tutorial on buttons.